So metaphysical misconceptions are what we're going to demystify, and we're going to begin right away. By first making you aware that the moon basically is no more than a woman than a male. And so I have to demystify and explain again why a lot of a lot of beings see the moon as feminine. But I also have to prove by clear facts that the moon is not feminine. This is uh, meaning that not only limited to being feminine and uh, how the secrets about the feminine. And that's why most, you know, they're just always off, just always off when it comes to the divine feminine. The secrets about this are actually encrypted, as you know, last week, I or believe we talked about that G in the middle of the square encompassed with Freemasonry. And we talked about how that G means hidden. The word G, as you know it, because it's a word, not just a letter, but that means hidden in occultism. And what is hidden is the genie. Okay, this is why in the movie Aladdin, which is an extremely occult Freemasonic movie, Aladdin, the Arabs, Aleppo Lodge, 100,000 Arabian Nights, all of that, that's, that's real stuff. Sinbad, Aladdin, Aha, Abracadabra, all this stuff is, is real stuff, but it's put in a different context to make it seem like a game for a specific reason. But the reason why I, I have to make sure that we're aware that when we refer to the moon as a female, that we're actually referring to a hemisphere. We're referring to a hemisphere of the moon is the facts that in these ancient cultures, as you read, you realize that the, the moon is actually in, in the ancient cultures a male. The, the more recent cultures see the moon as a female, but the older cultures see the moon as a male. Nanar Sin is a male in the older cultures, right? The moon's name is Sin in the older cultures, S-I-N or Nanar. And Nanar is seen as a male or a king. But now we're in this time and, you know, I'm not sure what name they're going to give the moon today, but we see it as a female, we refer to it as a mother. And that is because there's been a pole shift a literal switch in hemispheres in the overall consciousness, which affects all other consciousness. So a, an adept knows, no matter how much we may grin at others that make different statements, because statements are sometimes true. When you say the feminine, is, the moon is a woman, that is true. But it's not only a woman. And anybody that wants to argue that out, good day. You'll have a long time with the moon goddesses, I'm telling you. But if you understand what's happening you understand that in occultism as an adept, you know that the moon is the mind. That's why they say the mind is the womb. The womb of the mind is the woman. I think a, a brother was rapping at one point, at one point when they were still building on knowledge. And so the mind is the moon, but this is the mind you're in. As the Kaibalian consistently tries to state, and what is wind, which is the biggest mystery of them all? Where does it come from? It is thoughts thoughts are the metaphys the metaphysical thoughts are in this reality what we call the wind you don't know where it, your thoughts are going and sometimes you don't know where your thoughts came from because that's a part of the hidden and that's a part of the mystery okay and that is encrypted in this g or this genie also known as the jinn okay which is a very universal term like Saying a jinn is like saying a human. You haven't actually broken down anything except for like a small subset. You haven't said if it's a white human, black human, tall, rich, poor, half angelic. You haven't told them, uh, told them leopard. You haven't said anything when you just say human. So also when you just say jinn, you haven't really said anything because there's a, a world of numerous beings out there. Why? Well, for the simple fact that we're immortal. I would think that most people should hope that we're immortal. You know, you're all afraid of death, but I'm here to tell you that you are immortal and other beings are immortal. Now, the word immortal actually really refers to actually having consciousness when you pass beyond into certain zones. So it is more specific. It doesn't just mean that you'll live on because everything lives on. Immortal is actually more of an aware of consciousness after you've moved on. And that's what that word was originally designated about. But again, the depth knows that the moon is the woman excuse me, the moon is the mind, the mind is the woman and the man, okay? Because our minds have a masculine and a feminine and a neutral. So the moon is actually really more of an androgynin than it is in anything else. But if we want to move beyond such rudimentary integers, 
the male, the female, the androgynous. Come on, we're living in an entire complex, literally, of multiple energies that go beyond even those rudimentary values. So when we're saying the mind and everything in the mind, we're talking about everything in the flesh. And that's why I was saying before that what is known as the divine feminine is everything that is in the flesh, even if we think it's a male. So a male in a human body with skin is technically feminine because you're in a vessel predominantly because the flesh is feminine car or carne. This that those are all references to feminine and also references to also fire. OK, now we're going to have to go a little bit deeper and we're driving into this because obviously then if you realize that the moon is the mind, then what is the sun? Okay, and you also realize the moon is an androgynous, so you could stop seeing the sun also as a male. <laughs> because that, that doesn't make any sense anyway, especially as a dynamo, which we talked about. It has to have a positive and negative neutral, but actually the, the soul in the, the sun is something entirely different than what people have been able to conceive so far. I was blown away when the jewels were just raining in on me for me to distribute to you, because I was like, yo, that is incredible. Because the, su the sun is actually the power of new, which is uh, just... Being able to change everything at one moment, we're going to do it all over again. It's all going to be new. And all of the collective dreams and desires are all going to begin at that point. It's that level of power. Now, this level of power is a collective power. That's why we talked about how what the sun is, is like everything is threaded through the sun. Like even the deeper beings are testifying and saying that Life began with, dark, with the tear in darkness. I'll say this again, that in the ancient books, it says life as we know it began, planets as we know them, cosmos, et cetera, began with a tear in the darkness. And how you can confirm that is because none of that is like, well, let's take it in space. Let, 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 let's figure out how we're going to do it with Einstein and numbers. But deep in the womb, what is a tear in the womb? That's when the woman actually would lose her virginity at that stage, because now the womb where life exists is open. Normally, if it's closed, it's dark. But it, it's just explaining like a step by step process of before all this, there was only darkness and something was also still in the darkness. And then what we call life or coming forth by the day, which I'm going to explain to you has a lot to do with the sun, is the tear. And that's why I was saying before that when I had got super, super high up there, the sun didn't look like a ball. It looked like an opening. And because the world was moving, that's why I, that appeared to be moving. And But it was a hole to the other side, as if if you went through the sun, it would be all brightness out there. And all that sun really was was a hole in our realm. And you were seeing what was coming from the other side. And it's that much power. It's that bright. So the sun is a hole. It is not a ball out there. And that flips the whole state of consciousness. And this is the part of how it clicks. This turns on the conduit because then you realize, OK, well, if the moon is the mind is the woman, which is the womb. And then the sun, what is the sun? The sun is what creates what's new. This is why they started trying to make the sun masculine, because they're just trying to explain it in these rudimentary kid like puppet clay puppets. <laughs> And so, yeah, it's kind of like a masculine, the male, what the male does. But really what it's saying is, is this sun is actually everybody's collective soul together and what we dream of, what we want the next day to be, which is new. And that's why every day is a new day. So the sun is, is a power. It shouldn't be seen just as a globe or a sphere or a ball or a heat ball or whatever. It's a whole different thing. And as you become more aware of that, you'll realize how we already overcame Jin, Ifrit, and all the different entities that are actually here and all the subgroups and families and all that because we actually escape debt. And I'm going to explain that very clearly here. So remember, the mind has phases. OK, and I said, I, I'm going I go through phases. You go through phases now. Also, we've already discovered about the moon that not every moon is also the same. Beaver moon. We just came off a of flower moon. These moons are different. They name them different. Some even span it out into that. They're, they're different goddesses and it's a Sri Yantra and it's a womb. So there's a lot of evidence. But they say every month that there's a different phase. There's a different moon. OK, so this means that every month the mind is different. It's like dealing with the weather of the conditions that are currently happening. And what this creates is, is you oscillate back and forth between this 
positive or negative or this masculine or feminine. And while you're doing that, you may do that a thousand times in a day, but on the bigger clocks, it may do that once every 1500 or 2000 years, where at one point you come in, everybody's referring to the moon or their mind as a man. And then you dip in another time, everybody's referring to the moon and, the, and their mind as a woman. Then you dip into another time and then you find half of the people or certain people say it's the man or act like, because it's not what you say, it's what you act like. That, that's another big thing in this. There's a lot of very masculine moon goddesses. There's a lot of very feminine, et cetera. So there, you see these polarities, but you would then come to a time where there'd be a mixture. We're actually living in that time now where the mind is going back and forth of what it wants to say that it actually is. It, why is that happening? Let me clarify that. What do, what do they say thinking is? Think is all men. Men think too much. What do they say math is? Math, that's for people that like numbers and all the math and the geeky and the calculator and all the stuff men want to do. But all of that, my at and, and thinking and all that is actually a feminine trait. But people are referring to it as a man. So that's what I'm saying. It's, it's what they're doing. But then when they look at the moon, they'll be like, oh, my mother. So this is what I'm saying with these beings that have now, in most cases, from occultism level, have been dumbed down so much that even the, the, the lightweight gin can pull, it, pull wool over your eyes, meaning that the little thing whispering in your mind, telling you to hate somebody else, telling you that they're not the one, telling you you're not the one, the consistent bad thoughts, which in Arabic is actually a reference to that you have this mainframe. Let's look at it like a grid. And there's holes in each part of the grid, and these holes store your ideas. Just like how processors work. This is such a parallel to how silicone processors work. They're just holes. But they call these holes Jabas, the Jabba, right? But multiple Jabas. And if you have 70,000 Jabas, then you can hold 70,000 thoughts, okay? Some have 300,000 Jabas. The issue, though, is, is that in each hole, if negative thoughts start to infest your mainframe, it's like a, a virus because... Wholesome thoughts, thoughts that are, uh, let's say, balanced, balanced thoughts, they actually are really balanced. They stay erect and they stay in their hole. They stay contained inside of their hole versus negative thoughts spill over into the next compartment. So this means that when negative thoughts like viruses start to actually spill over into the other jobless or in the other holes with your good ideas and the great things that you believe about yourself, this is like a virus spreading through your consciousness. What this does on the external, though, is it kills the creative force because great ideas and having a clean mindset of positivity. I'm ready to do this thing. I'm this. That's pow, that's power in its truest tense. The thing about magic is people are actually trying to accomplish something with magic that they think they want. They're in a state of depravity. So they do this magic to, I want to be famous. I want to have someone love me. I want to have, and they think that's what they want. But as we've been de deliber deliberating so much on deeper levels of consciousness, who we are truly as beings, you start to learn that those things just really get you in a bit more trouble. They're great lessons to learn, but there's an ultimate lesson that needs to lear be learned with self. So let's take a moment again is, and how did it clear up at all, a little bit, any? No. Okay, great. Let's keep it going then. Yeah. Okay. So like your sage, we'll keep the internet sage happening. So, so we had these pole shifts then. And these pole shifts are real. They are going on in our consciousness. And when they happen, they upset the knowledge and the wisdom that we have. It just turns it on its head. So it makes what you knew become hidden. And it also makes what you didn't know and what you didn't see become visible. This confuses you. OK, when you enter into another realm, the first feeling until you get used to it is a feeling of confusion. It's like up is down, left is right. It's like some people work their uh, mouses and things on natural, what they call natural, which is nautical. Right. And others just it is as it is. Right. If you push up, it goes up. If you push down, it goes down. Some people use natural where if you push down, it goes up. That's how it's like immediately when you arrive in another realm. Up is down and down is up. So there's a confusion or disorientation. So on the bigger scale of things, when the matrixes start, 
when the when the when the mind boots back up again and the wombs come out and the ideas are implanted within the wombs and then birthed, there's a confusion at first at where we're birthing into because of these pole shifts. So because the pole shifts are a direct result of this, what the sun has to do. The sun has to bring over a long process, a complete new thing, a completely new thing. So when the new thing comes in at first, you're made to forget about what happened before. That's absolution to absolve, absolve father, son. Ab means father. Solve means to solve the damn thing. Absolve all your debts. You don't remember anything about owing nobody, none of that stuff, all the beings and all that, that's all gone. You're running around like nothing ever happened. That's what happens first because you're being given in a time and an opportunity to basically show who you truly are, to show if you didn't have all the debts and all this stuff that you had gotten twined into before with your existence, how would you really act? How would you really behave, <laughs> if you may? That is how this judgments and these kind of things actually take place. It's like, are we going to be leveling up this time or are you going to be going for a repeat this time? Or are you going to be going to the doom zone this time? This is what's happening behind the scenes as much more massive forces. If you're not going to make the decision, and I'm going to explain this in a minute, massive forces making decisions on your behalf if you're not going to make those decisions yourself. Because this has to do a lot with command. And I'm going to explain that here in a minute. Like who's in command? Like who's actually in control? Give me a minute because I do have notes here. Okay. So just so you don't lose this, what the sun is, is our desires, all of our desires together, burning with fire and passion to create a force called new, which is so powerful, it's very hard for you to even think about how this would work. A new day where everything that was done yesterday is put behind you or a new thousand years, a new 30,000 years where everything that was going on before you're absolved from. Now, this only needs to happen if you were getting in debt. This is how afterlife works. If you already have a huge debt. Now, the mainframe's got to be reboot again. You got to be absolved of the debt again and come back around. If you go from here in full knowing the truth about you, you're no longer hidden or veiled. Fourth dimension, which is like a twinkling of an eye, you get leveled up with lessons. There's teachers on the fourth dimension and there's no time there. So everything you need to know is immediately equipped and you ride into fifth dimension. And this is the process. And I'm only giving these numbers and these terms because it helps you understand just the logical stage of process here. However, there is things below this because this is all set up in layers. As I said before, there's layers to this stuff. So there's what they call the doom zone, which is like right next door. There's other realms like where the animals go to, like Pet Snooky. And, and a few of my pets that have left out of here, there's a place where they are. And so I'm going to explain how this is all set up and how all this is leveled really briefly, in fact. <laughs> so again, now we also have to define, because now I've told you what the moon is, that's the mind. I've told you what the sun is. That's the soul, everything together. So what are spirits? <laughs> because I, I didn't talk about spirits. And this was about spirituality today. I talked about the soul, which is not a spirit. And that's what I was trying to explain in the beginning. It even started getting me confused. After a while. I was like, okay, you know what? If I'm getting a little confused, I'm definitely confusing everybody else. Let me leave it for a while. Come back to it. What is the difference between a soul and a spirit? A spirit is also... It, it, a spirit is the creation from the life of the soul being with the flesh. So you could say that the spirit is the child of the soul and, and, the, and the flesh or the, of the sun and the moon. The spirit is the child of the sun and the moon. And you're going to see this so clearly here in a moment. But just imagine that what the spirit is, is that when I, when I leave, most certainly I will go and I will be everywhere as I am now. But when I dip, I'm going to go into something like I'm going to use another vehicle. We call that vehicle the spirit. OK, and to really understand it, man, there's complexities to the spirit, because now I just at minimum came from the sun and the moon, which have their own story. Like the sun already has everybody's story within it contained and the new idea. 
The sun is solved like a calculator, all everybody's problems already. So I, I'm mixed with that. And I got all my history, all my past. And this is interesting because we're only talking about two celestial bodies here. We ain't even brought Venus into play. But I got my history, I got my past, and I got my future. All one glove. Right now, we have to start realizing that, first of all, we've been dumbed down because we, we have a opposable thumb manifesting on this dimension. The issue with Ifrit, Jinn, and many of the other entities that boast that they have so much power is some of them metaphysically, spiritually, and physically still have a hoof. And if you ever try to grab something with a hoof and do electrical calculations and all sorts of stuff and calibrate tools, it is very difficult. This is a builder. Every single star you see on a United States flag is mimicry of the ancient knowledge of the Moorish nations that every star is a being, meaning that every star on the pentagram means the, a being that is being worked with. I don't want to say the word demon. A being is being worked with. So they're saying we have 50, that 50 stars. on We have 50 different entities that we're working with that are all chiefs and all kings. Anybody who sees a pentagram as an occultist knows what that means. So China is saying we have one great red dragon that is probably the equivalent of at least 50 of your or 49 of your other type of gin and beings. OK, now, the reason why this has to come into context is because you got to remember that even things like math, when we say algebra, algebra is a being that is a term of algebra, meaning the great. Right. The mighty one. OK, so right away. We see that there's a lot of words that we're using every single day that tell you where all the knowledge was coming from. So when they when they prance around with these big scimitar swords and they play around in their lepo lodges, like I said, in their masonry, and they put all this ancient oriental regalia there from the same country that they're bombing, you can tell that they don't have any respect for what that is. And that's why anybody that's a cultist knows when you see the symbol, the symbol they use shows the, the big scimitar over the head of who is Ma'at. That is that symbol. This is called the, 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 jewel, the jewel. The jewel shows a, a sword and it shows it over the head of what looks like a pharaoh, which is a female pharaoh versus the ancient one. The sword is below her. That's all it takes to change something. The, uh, the one they use is saying we're chopping off the head of the knowledge. We're hiding this knowledge about the genie, the jinn, the female and all of what goes on in that womb, that mind in that world. We're going to confuse all of that. And then we're going to bring in these certain group of beings. And these group of things are always they're battle hungry, battle driven, like the whole Valhalla idea. Every being is. Only on only getting strengthened more based on its victories, based on how many things it kills. And I'm explaining how all that works with the vicar, how all that works with Ab the Abrahamic traditions and what really went on in the astral plane or what you would say is the astral plane. The dream world, if you may, but which is really just the other realm. What happened? There was a war. This is why you see in the paintings of in, in India, you keep seeing these other beings that have different heads, different kind of heads, boar heads, uh, heads of dogs, heads of crows. You see them in the sky and then you see them going to war with other ones, other ones that either look like them. Some look humanoid, etc. There's a big war. This is the war in heaven, if you may. This war is being taken place. It's being is taking place between Different beings with different situations and different things that happened to them that brought them to this level of war. And today that's all sealed under a book that just says those are the jinn. <laughs> that all of these other half humanoid beings and all of their complexities and what happens to them on the spiritual world, the physical world they live in, all of that is closed and veiled and hidden as if it's gone. That's why I made a post the other day on uh, Secret Energy, and I, I posted a video about how many accounts of a dog-headed being they have in the Vatican and in other places where they have annuals to where uh, 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 Jesuits and other priests were writing back to the Vatican about how they should deal with the dog-headed men. Should they treat them as animals? Because if they're classified as animals, then they cannot believe in our Lord. But if they're men, since they walk upright, 
They have customs of men, and they go on and elaborate more and more and more about it. But what do we classify them as? Can we baptize them? So this is a real thing. There are beings that are here, were here, and are also on the spiritual plane because the spiritual spirit is still developing, and also here now in human bodies where they no longer have animal faces. And this is all part of this progression that has been going on that is totally hidden. And the level of ignorance that that would stoop you to on a conscious level, like you would basically be adding stuff up without even having the right numbers. You would be basing your entire existence on things that were missing some of the most important components. You would have such a huge missing link, it would be bigger than Bigfoot. It would be multitudes of beings that actually weren't, didn't have physical faces, like hu human faces, okay? And let me explain to you why. Now, if you notice also in the lure, it's all over the place. It's almost like, again, in two years initiated personally into these mysteries by yourself in the invisible college with yourself, it, it will be right in front of you, but it won't make sense. It talks about how now the Venus and many of the other feminine components, this could be also a metaphor for the higher state of consciousness as the divine feminine, doesn't need a husband, can produce on its own. And this is the whole big thing. The whole Sumerian text is full of this with Inanna, Ninenti, and several of the female goddesses consistently going forth with the creation process without what we would think is the need of a male. And this goes on a long time. They're even tweaking it, debugging it. Because facts, who better to call? These are ancient civilizations that rose to the top of any system of what we would call knowledge, who else to bring in about creation than the female herself, <laughs> an androgen in herself? We're talking about physical life, physical creation. So there was this prolonged period. Now, all that, again, is now summed up as Venus and Inanna, okay? And this is, again, like saying human. <laughs> Inannas are, like, numerous. Wombs are numerous. But what it's speaking about specifically is that these wombs could create without really the need of what we would call a male. And what they created ultimately end up becoming the beings that have animal heads. And I'm going to explain this why. The face as you know it, okay, the face that we're, we're, we have right now, this is a face of the sun. Okay, this is what the sun, as our collective, this is what we've decided on all together, that we would have these faces. OK, because before the faces that we had was going was given to us based on the process of how the mother actually created though these beings here. Now, first of all, the animals that you're calling wild animals are domestic in nature to to nature. Excuse me. The animals that you're calling wild are domestic to nature, meaning you think a lion is, is, is a badass compared to a net, a netaru. Like, this would be like you saying that the lions can get so big that they could take over all of nature. Nature will send, like, a, a simple bug and annoy all the lions and break them out in festerings and, and, and kill off a whole pack. There's something back there in nature. So that being specifically, these are like pets to this being. They, none of them are more powerful than nature. And the reason why that's important to realize is because this is also what nature, as you know it, you can say Venus in this case, and Nana, was using these animal components. And then what she also got was the pentagram, which is this. So she put these bodies, because the body was, this is, this is the, the magic, this is the M.E. She would take, she had the body, she had the ability to create the bodies, and then she put the heads as the animals. And this is still way along in the genetic process. When the animal heads came, it was like the biggest thing. You were on fleek. They're bringing animal heads back right now. You think this is a game? Like you turn on your, your Instagram, your YouTube, whatever, you get an animal head. This is to harken back until the time that just happened recently. Now let me take a breath in really quick because I don't want to miss any of these jewels. This is very important. This is the missing link. So, oh, now here's the thing. 
this is important for you to realize. Where does the concept of beautiful and ugly come from? Okay, have you ever wanted to know? My ladies out there, you, you want to know where this concept comes from, right? Let's get to the root of this. Where does the concept of beautiful and ugly come from? It actually started with time. Something called old and something called new. Okay? Now, listen to this. Now, that, of course, is like, okay, you ain't teaching me nothing. I know if I'm getting older, I'm getting more ugly, or what are you telling me? But I'm going to show you how this is actually a powerful mathematic equation. Now, if I give a child a pen and a paper and I say, draw me something, this is a child. Is it going to be a Rembrandt? Now, you may say it's beautiful. Like, if you have children, you're going to be nice. Baby, that's nice. But is it going to be abstract Picasso? Is it going to be like, it's going to be ugly, okay? <laughs> Let's just say it like it is. This is where time actually gets flipped on its head because it's actually a conundrum. And this is another way to, to demystify time through another integer, another formula. So somebody does something for the first time and it's ugly. So do you have... <laughs> Why do you think that the first humans or beings that were created were cute? Do you think that the first beings that they started working with first was cute? Look, okay, as an engineer, when we start working on things, it's ugly. I can show you. I just got circuit boards of Phi Aqua. I got circuit boards of Simon Phi, and they're ugly. I would not be able to sell this to anybody. They'd be like, is this going to shock me? But what am I doing? I'm getting my feet wet. I'm starting the process because there's no reason in me making the outside look great until I've been working on the inside. That still holds today. OK, so when the first beings are created, boy, they ugly. Like when you get a whiff of these beings, they uh, OK, I can't I guess I can't choose my family. But man, you got hit with the ugly stick because this whole thing, this is fusion. This is five. That's where they had like they had gotten so deep into creating the bodies. <laughs> the aesthetic was a big thing. So tusks and all types of stuff was kind of like phased out in the new idea because this also created a lot of the territorialism that we see right that we still kind of see remnants of. But it was crazy. There was always a war here. And this is why some of the bigger beings was like, yo, they're making noise all the time. That's what they call it. Making noise. They don't call it war. You have not seen war. When the macrobes go into it, man, they say the, 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 the vault even comes off hinges. They, they cut it out. The parents stop fighting. I don't know if y'all ever have fighting parents before, but the whole house gets to shake it. It's like, what the hell? It's all over, mommy and daddy. No. So we're talking about still down here. They call this making noise when we're fighting. And they were all the Jinn, the Ifrits and all the rest of them, giving them default terms. We're always finding like territorial type stuff. The same thing you see in nature because their queen, who's Netur, Inanna, Venus, whoever you want to call her, Ashtaroth, whatever name you want to give her. Like she's birthing and making beings, names, all this. So everywhere you go, you're going to basically find her. Lilith, whatever, you're just going to keep hitting that same wall until you realize, oh, shit, I'm in this. And it's coming from every single angle. So th check this out. This is how it is popping off. So again, so they're always conflicting. These badass kids. They're always fighting like the whole thing was to just prove how if you ever watch lions, if you ever watch dogs and quite a few other beings, especially the ones you see in the paintings, elephants, even you think the elephant is all nice. Run up, <laughs> run up. Y'all be thinking some of this stuff is like what Disney be showing y'all like you're going to go out there and namaste and everything is going to. No. No, that is not going to happen in the wild. The only one who gets that level of respect is actually those who are affiliated with the one, the mistress of speech, as they call her. And they call her that way because she can talk to these beings like this is also where the disconnect comes in in the code, because as it's encrypted in the Bible, now we shut up the mouth of the beasts. What this means is that now we don't speak the same language as the animals anymore because this is a new day. Now, what I'm talking to you about also was completely PR, flipped, redone, and taken by the Jesuit and created as Christianity.
Okay, they totally capitalized on the aspects of how the sun works, bring something in new. Now it's a day we're going from Eve and Eve evening, the night to the day. Now everything is absolved. Solar victus. Let me show you the key, the, the key words, new laws, a new king, Rex. Rex means king in Latin, right? Rex, Lex. Lex means law. Rex, Lex. OK, this is the new day, the new sun king. Now, when you take this into externalization, you get Catholicism. When you internalize this, you get the formula of absolving yourself from any debt. This is why this is how you know this is fact. What do they say that the external Jesus is supposed to be able to do? Absolve you from what? Sins. OK, this is interesting because the word sin actually means the moon. So this rebirth, which has already taken place when you came through the water, was really about absolving you from your debts or sins from the past life, your last memories. So they repurposed all of that, made physical beings to correspond to it, a man, everything that is there, because as above, so below, they bought a physical character. And that's why people believe it so much, because they know there's an essence of being absolved from something by the sun. And these are just the denominators that they're being given. And maybe some actually break through into a conduit of some sort when they when the mind when they're asleep and the mind dissolves all of what they've learned about that tradition into what it really means okay which i can say probably could happen in a twinkling of an eye i haven't given up hope on them that it's possible that what is laying within the christian mind is about to actually awaken and it doesn't take it's not going to happen verbally it's going to happen through some kind of chemical something that goes on inside of them. And then within a twinkling of an eye, they realize everything that I'm just explaining to you right now. Now, you imagine that's going to be shocking because it's going to be like all of a sudden the wool has been taken off their eyes. Now, listen to this. So Rex Lex is a new king. The reason why these words, again, they come out in the external, they come out in the Latin because the king, the Latin king calls himself Rex. And then he passes laws throughout the land. These are the new rules. This is a new day. Here's Lex. And to go against Rex and Lex on a metaphysical level, which is R and L, all the ancient languages consist only as a variant of R and L. The R is the left of the, uh, the cube. The L is the right, excuse me, vice versa, the right and the left of the, the, the positions of the cube. This is the double-edged sword. The double-edged sword is a reference to two languages, which is Arabic and Hebrew. This is the double-edged sword, okay? And the difference between Arabic and Hebrew is an R and an L. One is about the law. One is about rulership. One wants to rule. The other one wants to control through laws. And that's how they split the kingdom. OK, so this is the external system that has been put in place to actually plagiarize the sun and the moon <laughs> and all the stars. Because you're also a star. And so I'm going to show you how this all starts playing out with entities why they have pentagrams on the flag, why they're still working with many of the invisible entities. Do you know that you won't find really anyone that is quote unquote famous that doesn't cast or have someone that cast? Meaning that even LeBron James is seen in there with a rabbi casting his future, trying to explain to him what decisions and rules he needs to make, what numbers he should be having on his jersey, all of that kind of stuff. So there's nobody that has a lot of money that is not going to a soothsayer or going to some other uh, uh, person who has a real Sharif. There are still sh Sharifs, Wazirs, still on the realm. Uh, uh, um, Bedouins, Sharifs, Wazirs. Um, there's so many names, there's so many terms. That's how numerous it was and still is, but it's on hush because the only thing that has been agreed on now is that it's not going to be talked about until a time and into a season. And this time and the season is actually right now. This also lets me know, as they say, hey, if, if you can look at the sky and predict what's going to happen, surely you can predict what comes next. This is a metaphor to mean once this knowledge starts coming out, once it starts to become aware to the conscious, you know what time you're in. This also means that the transitions are ready the next level the next jump there's calculations that say by 2022 the beings that have been running most of the spiritual show are going to reveal themselves directly to humanity this is also a time where the, the consciousness is going to activate also so you can see where 
A person could get totally confused if they're still on the path that they're on now and they don't realize that the power is within them. And then all of a sudden this thing activates, allow them to become aware of more things. And then they just become aware of the things that know when to show up, when you actually have become aware of some stuff, but not everything because you lack wisdom. If you lack this wisdom, this wisdom is known as this, the wisdom of Solomon. The wisdom of Solomon is a code. It is not a person. It's about the soul. It's about Om and it's about on. Now, you know, your Om stuff. Now you learned about the, the, the soul. Right. And now on the God of Heliopolis, meaning the last thing that turns it as you flip your light on what? On. Do you not think that that word would have some big connection to how everything is going to work, especially if we're talking about activation and awakening? When is the lights going to turn on?